connected. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Woodsman Adventures. Today I have the Acherbis handguards. Uh, I tried to install them on the stock bars on the 2021 Honda CRF 300L, and you could make them work, but not good. Uh, these bars do have the inserts in the end of the bars, and to make them work, you're either going to have to use a small six millimeter bolt, or you're going to have to drill it out and tap it and make a bigger bolt work. Uh, I just don't know any other way around it to do it and do it right. So I thought, well, I think the best bet would be to go ahead and put some aluminum bars on it. You're going to have better quality bars anyway to go ahead and get some aluminum bars, put your hand guards on, and you're going to have uh, everything done right and don't have to worry about it for a long time. Um, what I opted to go with was the Renthal bars from CRS only. This is also from CRS only. And I got some Pro Taper half wobble grips from crsonly.com. These are the Jimmy Button Bend Renthal bars. Uh, I chose the high bend bar because I like the a little bit taller feel. So I think these will work out real good with the 300L because I am a taller guy. Then we'll take and install the bars, install the grips, then install the hand guards. And with all this combination together, we should be good to go. Uh, when I get down here, I will post a link below in the description to crfsonly.com where you can pick all this stuff up. He has everything for your Honda CRF 300L CRF 250L or any other Honda CRF. So let's go ahead and get these bars off, get the mirrors off, and get started. Okay, so first off, we're going to take these mirrors off. So we slide up this rubber boot, loosen the mirrors, and then we'll spin these off. So we we'll get these out of the way and we won't be banging them around and don't want to break one. So we'll go ahead and spin this contraption off. Now we'll go ahead and take the clutch lever off and the brake lever off. Okay, to remove these, we need a eight millimeter socket or a wrench. Uh, we first want to take off the little tie straps that hold the cables on. Should be a couple on each side. And we'll take the brake lever off. And we just want to kind of lay this stuff down out of the way. Uh, we'll go ahead and take this controls off, the throttle control. So on these, usually we have about two bolts underneath. It's a Phillips. So one of the reasons that we remove this is um, and change it to a different bars because these bars are uh, actually have holes drilled in them. And I have seen people take and make a way to line it up and you can drill a hole to match this little dowel that's inside here. Otherwise, you can take like I'm going to do is grind this dowel out. I'll put a little piece of 3M double-sided tape in here. And I believe when I clamp this back, it's going to be nice and solid and not ever have to worry about it turning. So we just lay these controls out of the way. That side also has the dowel just like this side. So we'll have to do the same thing on it. So after we get the screws out of this side here, the throttle side, the easiest way I've found to take this off is to go ahead and take your 12 millimeter bolts out here and unbolt the bars and we can just slide the bars out right out of the twist throttle. So go ahead and just break both of these loose on each side. I have my bike on a lift right here and I've got it strapped down so it makes it actually solid. It's really nice to work with when you're doing this instead of the bars trying to turn on you. You also want to take note when you take these off that they have a little dimple right there and that dimple goes toward the front. Now we should be able to just take the bars, pop them loose, and slide them right out of your twist throttle like that. Okay, now once we take this twist throttle side, we want to pull it apart very carefully so you not to break anything. And then inside here we have this metal plate with two screws. We want to take it out, and that way we can grind this dimple off with a Dremel or a small grinder, whatever you got. Okay, now we'll go ahead and remove the little metal plate out of this side the same way. And we'll take both of these over to the bench and we can grind that little dimple out. Okay, the way I thought of to hold this down, you could clamp it in a vise, but it may be even harder. I just have uh, this piece of plywood here anyway, so I took and put a screw in it. Uh, you don't want to put it tight enough that you might bend this, but just take a little screw put in it to hold this thing solid enough that you can grind that off. And there I just ground it down to where it's nice and flat. We'll take this one up, put the other one down, and do the same thing to it. 
This one is a little bit different shape, but it works out the same way. And there it's nice and flat. So all we gotta do is take them up, put them back in our controls, put the screws back in them. Okay, now we have both plates on either side, bolted back into place. So on your new set of handlebars, a lot of them have, like these have some marks here. And I use these marks to actually help line them up so you get them centered uh, when you bolt them on. Uh, you set them on there and just kind of line it up where you're even both ways. Should be good. Okay, now when we take the bars and go putting them on, we want to make sure that we put our twist throttle on here first. It'll make it a lot easier to slide this on now than try to maneuver it around and make it work after you get the bars bolted on. So the next thing we want to do is make sure that we got this centered and we can look at these marks here and get them to where they're centered on here and then go ahead and put our first clamp on and make sure you, that you put the dot toward the front. When you tighten these bolts down, you want to make sure that your gap from front to rear is the same so you're tightening them down evenly. Don't just tighten one side down and then tighten the other side down. You want to make sure that you do it in increments back and forth until you get them tightened evenly and the gap should be the same front and rear. So what we want to do is go ahead and just snug this down just a little bit. Uh, we don't want to tighten them up yet until we get all of our controls on, our clutch lever, brake lever, get everything on and twist throttle and everything set where we want it. Then we can tighten the bars. Okay, what I'm doing now is I got me some alcohol and I want to go ahead and clean the bars where this is going to clamp because I'm going to put the 3M tape on each one of those metal pieces that we took and ground the dimple off and I want to clean the bar all the way around. Do not clean the grease off your twist throttle right here. You need to leave that on there on the cam. But you and then I'll clean the metal part inside here and make sure that it's got a good surface to stick to. Okay, the, this is the 3M tape I have. It's really good stuff, real sticky. So I want to cut a short piece that'll fit on that metal part in here and do the same on the other side. So you don't want to take and after you do it, you don't want to stick it to it until you get it exactly where you want the twist throttle and where you want the control on that side before you tighten it down because it's going to be hard to get loose if you do that. Just take everything and make sure it's just a little snug. Uh, you don't want to tighten anything down yet until you're ready to line everything up where you want it, sit on the bike and feel. Make sure it's in the right position for you. Uh, everybody's pretty much got a different preference on that. All right, when you install your grips too, if you've never installed handle grips before, uh, it's different on an ATV than it is on a motorcycle. But on a motorcycle, because you have twist throttle, there's a larger diameter hole, which is your throttle side and there's a smaller diameter hole that is your clutch side. So we want to go ahead and install this uh, one on this side, which is a small diameter hole. Okay, the way I do my grips, you can see I have this one installed right here, is I take alcohol. A lot of people will use grip glue. Some people will use wire and you can tie it. There's some grooves actually here, like the pros do. They put wire around it and tie it and they don't use any glue. Some people put glue and wire. What I do is the alcohol, I take the grip, spray it inside with alcohol, and then spray the bar, it slides right on. When the alcohol dries, they actually stick pretty good. I've never had a problem, especially if you're gonna put hand guards anyway, they're not gonna slide off. Okay, so before we can go ahead and put the grip on this side, we, this needs to be tightened down so to hold it solid. And what we wanna do is go ahead and put our brake and our stuff on, straighten our bars, and we'll go ahead and level them up where we want them. And then we can tighten that down because once we tighten this with the 3M tape, we don't wanna be taking it loose. We want it to stay where we put it. Make sure you put your clamps on with the little arrow up and it says up right there on it. Like so. Now we need to go ahead and set on here and we'll set the bars exactly where we want it and tighten them down in place. Okay, so what you want to do is set on the bike. Make sure it feels like it's in the correct position for you that's comfortable. Uh, some people like them a little further forward. Some people like them back. I like mine actually centered where this is level it is a good feel for me. We want to make sure by our little marks here that we are centered. Get our bars and everything where it feels good, where it's comfortable and where you want it. And then we'll go ahead and tighten the bars down. Okay, so we want to go ahead and tighten these down, but not super tight yet. We just want them to where they won't be moving. Uh, lock them to the position that we want. And then I'll go ahead and take my manual. Uh, when I get totally done, I'll check the torque specs on it and torque these bolts and torque our brake and clutch lever bolts to specification and we'll be good to go on that. So now we need to go ahead and put our grip to where we want our twist throttle and we can tighten this down. All right, so now we wanna make sure that our throttle side is right pretty much flush. 
I actually give it just a little bit of the bar, just barely sticking out past the plastic part. As you notice, I've already got the end of this plastic twist throttle housing cut off uh, because I was already planning on installing these. So we'll go ahead and set that where we want it. We want to line our brake lever to where it's comfortable and where everything's going to fit, not be binding up, not hitting on anything. Now we can go ahead and tighten our brake lever. And like I said, we just snug these down tight enough that they're not going to be moving and we'll take and torque them later. Same way on the clutch side, make sure everything that feels good on our clutch. What you want is a little bit of an angle down on your brake and your clutch lever, and that's so when you're standing up, it'll be a lot easier to use, because if you're standing up and your hands are trying to do this, it's really hard to do, so you want to set them at a down angle. So now we got this where we want it. Now we can go ahead and put our screws in these, and we can tighten these down onto the 3M tape, and that should hold them. Okay, so now we can go ahead and put our throttle assembly back together being real careful to get it lined up right you want to make sure you're in the right place before you tighten it down scoot it out to where we want it here before we tighten it up okay there i got them both on both tightened are nice and solid i did go ahead it was off camera because i was doing a trial and error and instead of using the little piece of the 3m tape i went ahead and put a piece all the way around the bar in that position and i've done that on both sides i also let it sit on the edge here just a hair so it will clamp down on the outside of it and done the same over here where it overlaps on the outside. So when doing this, the main thing is this side, if it turns a little bit, it's not such a big deal. But if your throttle side turns, you don't want that because it could be dangerous. So, you know, make sure that you're doing this at your own risk. Uh, anytime you mess with handlebars or controls on a motorcycle, I don't want to be liable for it. So because there's all kinds of different installers. But the way I did it works, it's nice and solid. Uh, you can do it the other methods like people try if that's what you prefer. But this way here worked for me. So we're gonna go ahead and put our hand guards on. Uh, we'll have to put the grip on this side first, then we'll cut the ends of the grip off, then we'll put the hand guards on. So on this side, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna be using this grip anymore. It's kinda actually already boogered up where I messed with it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off, make it a lot quicker. And we'll take this side off and we'll put the new one on. You don't want to take a knife uh, that's too sharp and cut into your plastic throttle housing. So be careful of that. There we have the grip off. So now we'll take this new grip and put it on. And like I said, this is the throttle side, so it's the one with the larger diameter hole. So I'm going to go ahead and do the alcohol like I did on the other side. And line our grip up the way we want it. And then push it on. Alright, there we got this side on. Pretty much when you get this pushed on, if you have this pro taper level on both sides, then that's pretty much where you're going to want the grip located. Everything's good to go, so we're good to cut these ends off now, and then we're going to put the hand guards on. All right, so don't, you don't want to cut this off too far. You just want to cut to where the end is off and that it's got the hole all the way through. So I'm just going back behind the first rib and cutting it there and seeing if that's going to be enough. That way I'm not going too far on the first try. And it looks like that's going to be about the perfect thickness of cut. We want to make sure the grip is on all the way so when you put your hand guard on, that nothing is obstructing this and catching on the hand guard and stopping the throttle from turning. And we'll repeat the same thing on this side. Alright, so what these hand guards consist of, you have your hand guard itself, then you have this spreader insert that goes inside here. And what this does when you slide this in and then when you cut your hand guard on, you tighten this bolt, it spreads this out and tightens on the inside of the handlebar tube. And then right here you have the clamp it will go on over here and you have different inserts. These are the ones that's going to fit the 7 8 bars. There's three different sets, so make sure you get the right set that fits tight on your bars. So we'll be clamping this on here, then we'll put this end on. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and take this out of here, run our bolt into here. We're going to put our insert right just like this. The way this is made, this insert, it's the same shape right there, so it will actually lock in and the insert will not turn whenever you're tightening it down. So be sure that you put it like that, run your bolt in and hold it in place. And then when you put this part on here, it has little barbs that goes in these notches right here. So once you get them lined up, it can't turn. And you want to just go ahead and run it down, not tight. So it's going to hold this part locked in place. Now, you don't want to tighten it enough that you start spreading this out or it's not going to fit inside the bar end. Okay, now that we got this on, we can put our clamp on this side. The bolts that hold this on is five millimeter. So what you wanna do is put these on 
and just loosely fit them so you can still maneuver them around uh, to get them lined up exactly where you want them. So now that we got it loosely fitting, we'll go ahead and put the handguard onto here, take out this bolt to snug it up and get it lined in place. Take the same five millimeter that we use on the other side and line this bolt up where we can get it started in here. Once we get it started in, we can figure out exactly where we want it. Okay, now that we got that snugged up, we can set them exactly where we want it and tighten it down completely. On this clamp on the bottom here, you want to make sure that you tighten them even top and bottom. So make sure this gap is the same top and bottom. And you also, before you tighten everything down and after you tighten everything down, make sure that your throttle is free. So when you twit, pull it back like this, it should snap shut. If it's dragging there any way at all, then you want to loosen it up and redo it because you got it wrong. You definitely want to make sure that that's correct. So now I'm going ahead and tightening everything down. So it's nice and solid. Then I can go ahead and tighten this end down here. Okay, before you tighten this, just make sure that you are in all the way and you can tell by this tapered part, right here we'll be touching the end of your bar. And like I said, make sure that this is snapping free. Then we can go ahead and tighten this down and this side will be complete. We can go do the next side. All right, the way the, this works on the CRF300L, the best uh, thing I think I found would be to have the throttle cables running over the top of them. Sometimes you run them under depending on the hand guards you use, but on this one I think the throttle cable being over the top is pretty much a perfect fit. They're not binding up against anything. You want to make sure that your throttle cables are not binding, and when you turn your steering full lock both ways to make sure you're not pulling the throttle or the brake and everything is free and clear. Okay, now we want to go ahead and make sure we put our cable ties back on to hold them in place. And we'll go ahead and put our mirrors back on. Before you tighten the mirrors down, you want to get on the bike and position the mirrors where you want them before you actually tighten down the two lock nuts. Then you can put your rubber grommet back on there. Same on the other side. And after we got all that back on, we can go ahead and put our crossbar pad back on. All right, one last look. You can see what they look like from the front. So the color match is actually pretty good with the plastic. This is called the red and black version of the hand guards. And one last check to make sure our throttle is nice and solid and it's snapping back like it should. Make sure our, all of our levers work good. Now I'll take the bike off my lift here and then I can check lock to lock, make sure that we're not pulling the throttle or the clutch levers as long as we have plenty of slack. These are a lot nicer, taller bars. And as I said, these are the Jimmy Button Bend, uh, high bend of Renthal bars. I'll post a link to CRFs only below where you can get these. You can also get the uh, Cherby's hand guards. You can also get the Pro Taper hand grips. Last thing is I want to stress is to make sure that your throttle is nice and solid no matter how you do this. Be sure that your throttle housing is nice and solid and it's not going to be rotating on you just for safety reasons. So um, do this at your own risk as you should do on anything working on a motorcycle. Thank you all for watching Woodsman Adventures. Click the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll catch you on the next one. Right on.